folks, it's the Red, and welcome back to the Crash 2 and Dread's No Damage Run. About time. So, we're about to go into the next level, and I've been spending the last little while trying to figure out what the meaning behind Magma Mania could be, and I think I've figured it out. Hear me out here. So, you take an R and add it to the end of Magma, and you get Magmar, as in the Pokémon. You add a C to the end of Mania, and you have Maniac. R and C. RC is the name of a cola. Cola is something you buy at the grocery store. Grocery stores have food. Food which you cook with fire. Fire which is generated by, you guessed it, magma. Very clever, developers. Very clever. So before we get too far, I need to make a little bit of an addendum about this level, thanks to MarioFan94 for pointing this out. I had said in the first prehistoric level that I thought that they were prehistoric levels, but actually these are based on a level from the Wrath of Cortex, namely Crash and Burn, the volcano level from that game. That monkey enemy that we just spun away also originates from that level, and that's what the theme here is based on. Although I can see why I would have thought that this was a prehistoric level, because it's using the same music from Crash 3. And much of the theme is about time travel, much like in Crash 3. Oh well. So anyway, we got a little path down here that we'll be sure to check out later. Up here we're going to find another Wrath of Cortex hand-me-down, the dive-bombing birds. Once you get under them, they'll swarm towards you, just run out of the way, and you can avoid their attack. Alternately, you can just spin into them. Alright, so going on to the bonus, we're going to be following much of the theme of the rest of the level, which is involving riding platforms across streams of magma. The thing you're going to want to watch out for while you're riding across and breaking all the boxes is the occasional lava bubble that jumps out of the magma here. If, if you're good at speedrunning, you can just bounce on those boxes to reach this point. You don't have to ride the uh, platform all the way across. But this is generally the safer way to do it. Bounce on this crate and land here. Get ready to jump over the lava bubble. And whether or not you want to count those lava bubbles as enemies... Uh, this might be the first bonus level that has such a hazard within it. You don't usually encounter, like, enemy-type things within the bonus rounds, so I think that's kind of interesting. Anyway, just watch for the bubbling up ahead and you'll know when it's time to jump. They're generally pretty easy to notice. So we reach the end of here. There's a 1-up crate down here that we can't quite reach with our Super Body Slam, but we'll go ahead and take this TNT. Clear out those crates over there, and if we walk in this direction, we can bounce up and hit it. Well, that's kind of a weird cutoff for the uh, lava there. And you can see there's also a little gap here. This is where the two paths are going to meet up. We'll be sure to check that out in a little while. Another dive-bombing bird right here. You'll just wait for him. And now we've got some trampolines. These feel like they'll be right at home in Crash 1, in the uh, native levels. And that was a uh, freeze crate. It makes all the enemies on screen freeze for five seconds. The first and only time that they appear in the series. So that's also kind of interesting. And we've got another new crate type. We jump into this and we gain the Copter Pack, also from Wrath of Cortex. It's very simple to use here. You just press up, down, left, and right to move, and you can also spin with the B button. So basically all the functionality that it had in Wrath of Cortex, it also has here. Except here it's a lot simpler to use because we're not trying to remember the different buttons that make you move. It's all very simple with the D-pad. Go ahead and grab our crystal here. Just make sure you're watching those lava bubbles, and you should be okay. Also, don't go into the side of the wall there. That's not going to do you any favors. But... Once we cross over to here, we lose the copter pack, take out all the boxes, and there's our gem. So that's it for the level itself, but we still have that other path that we need to go ahead and take care of. We're probably going to find the blue gem shard on that path, so let's head back and take care of that, shall we? Alright, so let's check out the lower path this time, and see what was on the road not taken. Here we're going to want to make use of our new Super Slide ability. Hold L and press R and you'll zoom straight across and hit this enemy on the other side of the nitros. So you don't want to be doing a regular slide and crawl to get under there, otherwise you're going to have some trouble. Duck here, grab the blue shard, and we are now at the other end. And there we go. There's where the two paths meet up, and we do have to make two separate 
uh, runs to get here, because if you take the upper path, you can't get the blue shard, and if you go for the blue shard, you can't get the boxes on the upper path. So, yeah, two visits at least are going to be required here. Okay, and with that, Magma Mania is completely cleaned out. Not too difficult of a stage, we do still have a couple of outtakes to check out, and we'll have a look at them, and be sure to join us as we take on the next boss, Evil Coco. See you then! Oh, hmm, well, that's a bad start. Speedrunners could just bounce across the... Oop. Well, that's clearly not me. On this platform, grab your blue shard, and here's where the two paths meet... What? That was a questionable hit. 